So keeping in this theme of remembering our baptism and God's love always, I'm going to sing an opening prayer. I invite you to close your eyes and hear these words as God's voice to us. I have loved you from the beginning. I will love you as others come and go. You are indeed my beloved. So rest, be still, and know. When have you <clears throat> experienced a deep feeling of love and connection? I'd just like you to think for a moment of an experience of love and connection. One of those moments for me is when I think way back to when I was around 11 years old. It was in East Tennessee on a hot summer day. I remember lying on the cool green grass with my arms outstretched. And next to me was my puppy, Nero. He was a little black lab. He had his chin resting on my arm. And I was looking up at the beautiful sky with the white clouds passing by. And Nero let out this sigh. (laughs) And then I let out that sigh. And I just had the deepest sense of We belong to each other, and we belong to God. In the vast beauty, I was both so small and so grand. This experience comes to mind when I think about what it means to mind the Sabbath. When we pause in the Sabbath sense, we get a wider perspective on things, namely, that we belong to God, who loves us no matter what. One of my favorite writers is Anne Lamott, and she said it beautifully. And for those of you who are techie, you'll really get it. Almost everything will work if you unplug it for a while. (laughs) In Sabbath, we unplug for a bit. I think it's safe to say that sometimes, without even being aware of it, we unconsciously believe that we are valuable because of what we do, that we have to achieve certain things to be lovable. There's cultural pressure to prove ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for being the best we can be. I've got my competitive side. I'm constantly trying to learn new dances and do the old ones better. I want to be a better mother, a better pastor, a better mate. I hope I will always be a lifelong learner. But there's a very big difference between achievement that is spurred by our curiosity and our gifts and an underlying feeling that I have to do this in order to deserve that love. Baptism and confirmation are our reminders of God's grace. When we confirm our baptism, we remember that we don't belong just to our parents. We belong to God. We belong to one another. God's love and grace is with us from the beginning. We don't earn it. We just get to receive it and to grow into it day by day. So today, Henry and Nathaniel, 
we celebrate with you that you are choosing to affirm your baptism in Christ. You are turning toward that spirit of love that has been with you from the beginning. It's with you now and will continue on wherever your lives lead you forward. You, we, are part of the whole and holy. In our complex world, it's important that we make choices that help us to nurture that relationship with God and part, being part of the whole. So those scripture readings today about Sabbath give us one of the most helpful tools of cultivating that relationship. It's an invitation to unplug. This need for Sabbath, I think, is baked into our humanity. And it's no mistake that you go all the way back in the Hebrew scriptures to Deuteronomy, where we're given the commandment, and then we get Jesus' example of healing on the Sabbath, because it's healing. Well, today we still need that Sabbath gift, all the more so because of our fast pace of life. We have high expectations. We have impediments to rest and, re and unplugging, including technologies. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I wonder if anyone else has problems putting away their phones at night. Okay, I see some guilty looks. <laughs> it's right next to me too, right next to you. At one level, we can connect rapidly and broadly and that's a wonderful thing. But sometimes, paradoxically, it also makes us feel more isolated and it makes the world seem more broken. Observing a pause in our life, a Sabbath, it's not just good self-care. It's not just emotional maintenance. It's necessary to recall our very purpose for being alive. We are made in the image of God. We are made to love. We are made to love God, creation, and one another. Without the regular discipline of pausing simply to be, we sometimes fall into patterns that separate and isolate. We can believe unconsciously that we are in control of everything. And when we feel that we don't have that control, or if we mess up, things get sticky and complicated. We may even live as functional atheists without trust in God. We live without connection to others, to the world, and our deepest selves. Another hazard of all the overwhelming information that we can get so rapidly is feeling anxiety. Anxiety arises from thinking about the future or the past and not being able to be here in this present moment. One person, well, actually I know some people who do this, and I'm going to start soon. <laughs> a good Sabbath discipline is to reserve one day a month with nothing on the schedule. Does that seem impossible to you? I'm, I'm seeing yeses and noes. So one day a month free, nothing scheduled. And notice the word discipline has the same root as disciple. Going deep in faith requires that we have limits. The Sabbath was made for people not people for the Sabbath. The law, the limits, the boundaries help us to grow safely and deeply. Do you remember that movie, Footloose, Kevin Bacon? And, I mean, there are two different versions. I like the old one. <laughs> but the minister, unfortunately, is a very judgmental person who feels that he has control over the town. And the dancing that Kevin Bacon from the outside brings in, helps to, to show an expression of joy and life. 
And it is true that sometimes, so I've known people who had Sabbath rules growing up where there was a list of things they could do and could not do on the Sabbath. Though sometimes the Sabbath has been enforced as repressive and a legalistic burden, that misses the point. Hasidic rabbi Zalman Shachter Shalami said this, There is a disease rampant, a chronic, low-grade depression that never knows how to smack its lips and say, it's good to be alive. <laughs> All the nostalgia we experience is a yearning for the Sabbath to come home to the good mother, one's being, a homecoming with the body to the body, eating, resting, singing, loving, resting in the bosom of Abraham, the Sabbath is long and full when one knows how to be beyond doing. Sabbath is not a painful duty that we need to squeeze into our busy lives. It's a joyful invitation and good news to love. We belong. We belong to God. The reason I began this story or this sermon with the story of my little dog Nero and resting in creation is that we belong to God and so does all of creation. I'm going to close in a moment with a poem that will be familiar to a lot of you. It's by Wendell Berry. Following the poem, we're going to have a time of silence. And in that silence, I invite you to close your eyes, to remember that sense of belonging, connection with the people next to us, with the people that have come before, and with God. So close your eyes, breathe deeply, remember the Sabbath day and God's love. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free.